Now it's time for our corner on point where we speak to various experts in their field to dig deeper into the biggest news stories in the spotlight right now. So in that speech to mark the 76th founding anniversary of the regime's ruling Workers' Party, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un placed a real heavy emphasis on his five-year plan, namely on the need to improve the living conditions of the North Korean people. He demanded his officials solve the people's chronic health and uh, food and housing problems. Yes, for more on this and other North Korea-related analysis, we, are, we connect to Mark Barry, a longtime North Korea expert and the associate editor of the International Journal of World Peace. Thank you for coming in. Good morning. Thank you. Now, uh, Mark, some experts are viewing Kim's remarks as an attempt to shore up internal unity as the North's economic woes become increasingly more dire. And it's not to mention the negative effects of the pandemic and numerous natural disasters. That's their take. But how do you, how do you interpret Kim's remarks? We have to remember uh, North Korea emulates the old Stalinist Soviet socialist model of economic mobilization. And the Soviet Union was well known for their early five-year plans, which they demonstrated throughout World War II and during the post-war reconstruction of the economy. So from that point of view, it's highly effective. Uh, of course, we could say from our point of view that it's highly effective in just muddling through. But when you're in a deeply serious economic situation, uh, aggravated by the other factors that you mentioned, then this is something that uh, a, a Stalinist uh, modeled regime will do. Furthermore, we should recognize that this is uh, finishing up the 10th year of Kim's leadership. And uh, you go back to the old uh, stalwarts, which is the five-year uh, plan. And that's exactly what he was talking about uh, in his speech yesterday. Now, speech is full of this kind of bombastic nationalistic sentiment, and we're all in the same boat together. Nothing new when it comes to North Korea, of course. But is there any, anything really to suggest that it's gotten so bad in the North that Kim and the rest of the elite in Pyongyang are genuinely concerned that things could get to a point that it's so bad that there could either be an internal challenge within the ranks in Pyongyang to his power, or even some kind of popular uprising? I think we have to be very careful about uh, using terms like uprisings and so forth. Uh, but we should also note that uh, in 1994, there was no sign of the difficulties in North Korea. But the uh, NGO I work with, uh, by December of 95, we were told directly by North Korea that they were in really bad situation and they needed to be able to uh, get out of it uh, with some Western help. So I would say that the problem is not so much what's uh, uh, internal dissent, because uh, what will happen is that people will be exposed if they disagree, and they'll get purged, just like the uncle was purged, or in lesser ways. In my opinion, the biggest problem that North Korea uh, fears, whether it is right or not, is the fact that Chinese pressure is forcing it to conform to its foreign and defense policies and wishes North Korea, in my view, to slowly integrate its economy into that of China's Northeast. And that would lead to a progressive loss of North Korea's sovereignty. So this is how I think the North sees it, whether or not Chinese intentions would actually lead to that. That's what they fear is the biggest threat. Mm -hmm. Now, on its relations with South Korea, North Korea has been softening its tone toward the South in recent weeks. But we also need to keep in mind that President Moon Jae-in's term ends in, in the next five months. How might the North's attitude shift towards Seoul should, um, should the more conservative People's Power Party take over the levers of power in South Korea in March 2022? We only need look back to the days of uh, President M.B. Lee and President Park. Uh, North Korea uh, knows that a conservative South Korean government will at best pay lip service to inter-Korean relations, but in fact, uh, a conservative government will urge the U.S. not to engage the North, and that will make North Korea unable to balance the Chinese pressure that I was speaking about, and thus it would create, in the North's view, an existential crisis for it. So that's why this is a, maybe the most important election from North Korea's point of view. Yeah, well, we've had uh, a couple of inter-Korean summits under President Moon Jae-in, so if his party uh, 
regains control in March next year, we might see more summits and more interaction between the two Koreas, should, be, should that be the case. Turning to uh, President Biden, he's been in the White House for just over nine months now because uh, North Korea, U.S. relations are, of course, key to this. How do you rate uh, his administration's efforts thus far? Pyongyang has pretty much rebuffed every single attempt for diplomatic outreach uh, towards them to this point. North Korea feels that nothing has changed since Hanoi uh, and, and the attempts to resuscitate Hanoi. Unfortunately, uh, in my opinion, and with all the good that he had done, uh, Ambassador Sung Kim is still primarily the U.S. ambassador to Indonesia. He's just part-time. Uh, and at the same time, Secretary Blinken, when he was at the uh, ASEAN meeting uh, a, a few months ago, he urged uh, th those countries to participate and better cooperate in sanctions on the DPRK. So in my view, uh, even comparing it to the Arab-Israeli, uh, the Palestinian situation with Israel, Biden seems somewhat more interested even in a modicum of a two-state solution for Israel and its and the Palestinians than he is in actually creating a, a two-state solution, uh, excuse me, a Korean peace solution uh, on the peninsula. And so I don't think he's going to react very well to this idea of, a, uh, of an end-of-war declaration. It's, the U.S. just does not see things this way, and one can critique it, but unfortunately I don't see that situation easily changing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for us. Uh, thank you for your insights, and let's see how the situation unfolds in the coming months. Yes, thank you very much, Mark. That was Mark Barry, associate editor of the International Journal of World Peace, sharing his expert analysis on North Korea. Thank you very much. You're welcome.